Water is transported from the roots in the soil to the leaves of a plant through a special tubule called the xylem. This water is eventually lost through a similar process to evaporation, known as transpiration. Now with this experiment we will be allowed to determine the water uptake of a leafy shoot and eventually the rate of transpiration, i.e. the rate of water lost from this plant. We will also be able to determine how inf different environmental factors can affect the rate of water uptake. Such factors as light intensity, humidity and temperature can all affect the amount of water that will be absorbed by a plant. You might not be able to tell but it's a little bit cold here so we're not actually going to conduct the experiment here. In fact, we're going to take it inside. Hi, now that we're inside and it's a bit warmer, we can move forward to the experiment. This is really simple. All we're going to need is a retort standing clamp, a beaker full of water, a stop clock, a measuring ruler, a capillary tube with a bit of rubber tubing connected to it. This is going to act as our photometer, which we are going to connect to a graded scale. And using this, we can measure the distance moved by the air bubble. And one thing you're also going to need is a leafy plant. And I just happen to have this geranium beside me. Okay guys, so before you get to this stage where you've got your apparatus set up and your experiment running, you obviously have to do a little bit of prep work. The first thing you've got to do is submerge your capillary tube and your rubber connector underwater and allow the tube to fill with water. Okay? And then you're going to have a look at your plants and you're going to try and choose some leaves which have a stem as close to the diameter of your rubber connector as possible. Okay? And I've been lucky enough to kind of find one here. So we can get this out of the way. Keeping the tube underwater, you want to submerge the stem of the plant that you're going to use and connect it into the rubber tubing. Try not to get any water on the leaves of the leafy shoot that you've chosen as this will directly affect the rate of transpiration. Then obviously as you can see we're going to connect that to the clamp and submerge that in water. Now before you start any recording any data, you want to leave the apparatus for 5 minutes to allow an air bubble to form inside the capillary tube and then what you're going to do is leave it for a further 5 or 10 minutes depending on how much time you've got in class. Huh? And you want to measure the distance that's moved by the air bubble inside the capillary tube. Now, dividing this distance by the allotted time that you allow it to run, that will allow you to calculate your rate of transpiration. We can now repeat the experiment under different environmental conditions, such as removing the light intensity, applying some wind, and if possible, we can change the temperature as well. So, you want to investigate how light intensity can affect the rate of transpiration. So what you want to do is you want to take your plant and you want to put it in a cupboard in the dark so you're removing all light sources. Alright, very funny guys, you know I'm afraid of the dark. Hello? Help! Help! And to investigate how wind can affect the rate of transpiration, we're going to use our trusty household fan here. But remember, keep it on a low setting because you don't want the wind to be too strong. It could get a bit dangerous. Wow! Wow! Ah! Temperature change can be achieved by placing the plant in a preset water bath. Therefore, any water that is absorbed by the plant will be at a higher temperature than as we have here. Well, that's the end of the experiment, guys. And assuming that everything's gone according to plan, we should have different rates of transpiration for the plant under different environmental conditions. In windy conditions, when we were using the fan, you should have seen an increase in transpiration. That's the same when you increase the temperature of the water using the water baths. You should have seen an increase in transpiration there. However, when we removed the light source and held the plant within a dark environment, you should have seen a decrease in transpiration. Humidity is also an environmental factor which can affect transpiration. However, it's quite difficult to mimic in a laboratory setting. However, if this was possible, you would have seen a decrease in transpiration also. Well, I've been Simon. That was measuring the rate of transpiration. I'll see you again soon. Ah, uh, fourth floor.